Okay, moving on to our second speaker of today. Um, so we're delighted to have with us Karen Jones. Karen has a range of experiences working in the university sector across Europe, uh, the Middle East, uh, Australia and New Zealand. Um, but she recently came to Ayrshore's to join uh, the National College of Ireland as the Executive Director of Quality Assurance and Statistical Services. Um, Karen's here today to share some of her experience as one of the lead developers of Ways Wales, which did an awful lot of work in encouraging partnership and student engagement within the Welsh higher education sector and I'm sure she's really interesting perspectives to bring. Um, so Karen Jones, everybody. Thank you. Um, I'm so paranoid now after the last presentation. So as a Gen X person, there's about 15 slides. For all you youngsters, you're ahead of the game. That's all I'm going to say. You can just ignore me now. Um, but hello and welcome. Just, just check that it works. Fantastic. Um, uh, I was going to give some words, really, as I say, around Wise Wales, which was really a similar process to what we've done in, in um, Ireland. It was established about 10 years ago now, and at the time I was working for the Funding Council for Wales. So I'll talk about the journey that we went on as a sector in Wales, and also some of the lessons I think we've learned. Like I say, you're a step ahead. You're doing well. We are doing well. Okay. Um, in terms of looking forward as well as looking backwards, a little bit about myself. So basically, I've been working in sort of education, higher education for about 25 years. As was said, I move around a lot. My accent is really strange. So it'll be a little bit of Welsh, a little bit of New Zealand, a little bit of Irish. Just go with it. Um, eclectic, I say. Um, but certainly throughout my career, it's really been a focus on student empowerment and engagement. I was first generation going to university from a Welsh university town. I went to Warwick University where I got drunk, I did a lot of sociology and a lot of drinking. Um, I pretended I was a student rep and then I got a job in Swansea University when I graduated setting up a student rep structure. So I could clearly black my way through that. Um, but generally from 1993 onwards, it's been a really interesting journey and that set me on the path for quality assurance, but more importantly, quality improvement and the impact on learners. So that's the journey that I've been on, and I think that's the journey that we're all on. Um, and it's very much making sure that, as was said in the last presentation, if we're asking for student time or staff time in anything in this arena, we need to make sure that that time is well spent. So that's kind of where I've been working for the last 25 years, um, in various locations. Um, and certainly one of the lessons that I have learned, I hope to bring to the table today, is much of my experience back in the 90s, noughties, was around the directives. It was having structures in place to drive the change, funding models in place to put the positions in place to have a student rep and have a student structure and put all of that in place. But in the last three or four years, particularly from New Zealand, they flipped it. It's like a flipped classroom approach. It's actually not about the structures. They don't really mind so much about student feedback systems. They're getting rid of some of the student feedback systems. It's actually how do we ensure that the student voice demonstrably drives the decision making that we do as an institution. So it's kind of student led from a bottom up in terms of institutional design rather than top down in terms of funding body quality assurance pushes. So it's been an interesting situation. <coughs> so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that journey that I've been on and we've all been on. Um, just for comparison then, just to say, the sector in Wales is it's quite small, um, largely comparable. At the time when I was again doing this work for the WISE setup, there were 13 universities. Um, after lots of political negotiations and mergers, there are now 10. Um, and at the time, the colleges of further education and private providers were not included in this initiative. So again, things evolved. <coughs> Um, and certainly at the time, the Welsh Funding Council was looking at Scotland, as many of us do, and looking at the Sparks initiative and saying, well, actually, that's really exciting. How can we just lift and shift it and put it into Wales? And the question we were asking at the time was, well, actually, is that the right approach? Is it a sustainable model? 
how does that really inform and influence decisions being made within our institutions and a better student experience? Um, so rather than just throwing money at it, um, we threw money at consultants, as is always the way, um, and they told us what we knew, which was largely, look, work has begun within the sector. Every institution is putting in student rep systems and structures, but it's variable in terms of quality. So some of the findings that they came up with really were focused largely on the extent of systems in Wales. And again, this is now 2006 to 2009, um, long time ago. Um, but basically, there were some positives coming through. Again, it wasn't just tokenism. There were systems in place. In most institutions, <coughs> students were part of decision-making processes. Their effectiveness, I would question, but they were there. And there were lots of conversations really coming through around, look, give us time, give us resources to build the structures that will be fit for purpose. We don't necessarily need something bolted onto us, help us embed these structures within. And some of the less positive outcomes were really, as we would expect, around different institutions had different sizes, they had different resources they could give to this space. Some institutions were paying lip service to the space, others were taking it seriously. So again, for the funding council, it was like, well, okay, how do we find a sustainable whole of institutional approach that actually can move us forward rather than just, again, throwing money down a hole? Effectiveness, though, why we, got, we had the baseline for it, uh, extensiveness, there was very little evidence at the time around impact. So they could all say they had a student rep system, they all had student reps on their councils, but so what? And again, nobody was asking the so what because nobody needed to ask the so what. It was, you had the structures, bye bye, go away, that's fine. Um, so we'll come back to the so what in a second. Um, so like I said, they looked at Sparks, they decided that there was pros of buying, lift and shifting in, and I'm sure you guys as a sector have been thinking of similar things, kind of what is tailorable to us, what's the best thing for our institutions and our learners. If that is Sparks, fantastic. But if it isn't, and actually we want to build that structure ourselves, then let's invest the time and effort to do so. Um, and that's really where the Welsh institutions went. So again, similar to ourselves, we had the same old faces around the room, and certainly the faces that have set up really the NSEP program here today. So the funding body equivalent really kicked in, and it was putting in place additional funding at a national level for uh, NUS, so the USI equivalent, <coughs> as well as then to the institutions to put some of that infrastructure into play. They were also making a condition of funding to institutions that they had to have student-staff partnerships in place and they had to have institutional charters. So student charters that were co-signed by the president of the student union and also then the president or the chair of the governing body. So they could use their political levers and financial levers to put in some of that infrastructure. And then, obviously, the Students' Union, like NSEP and USI here, were the best place body to help build the culture of partnership, consistency of practice, and really share the good practice. Um, Hugh, Higher Education Wales, which is kind of like IUA, um, Universities UK, they were there to make sure that the universities and the HE providers really demonstrably didn't just pay lip service to the space, that actually made some differences and changes to their governance structures, to their management structures, and took this space seriously. Um, obviously, there's political lobbying in that space, and again, politically, the institutions and the lobbying bodies knew you had to invest here, and there were reasons politically for it, as well as institutionally. Um, HEA, the HEA, the National Forum equivalent, also again, then was looking at the staff angle. How do you ensure that you're changing the culture within institutions and you're giving staff the confidence to understand that decision making with students is actually really effective decision making? Don't be scared of that stuff. So they were brought into the table. And finally, the QQI equivalent, QQA, were again making sure, from their perspective, that not only that they were encouraging the practice, but also monitoring the impact. So again, with the reports, as was said earlier, it's seeing the evidence of impact coming through. 
So Wise Wales was set up in uh, 2009, it's been going for 10 years. Um, and again, similar to the NSEP initiative here, same sort of area of activities, all great, etc. really happy. But so what? <laughs> again, it comes back to, as an external person, 10 years on now, I can see the infrastructure is in the institutions. I can see that the student voice is firmly embedded. But where's the visibility of the impact? Where's the visibility of the change? And I think that's where you make the biggest impact in terms of culture change. Because for institutions as a whole, for students and staff, for me, it's how do you, how do you make this stuff visible and transparent and actually say your time your limited time is really well spent and valued, and this is what happens as a result. That not only gives affirmation to the time that students have spent retrospectively, but also helps encourage more students to get involved in feedback and representation processes, because it's demonstrably shown that there is a difference and an impact of what they do. So again, that's some of the stuff I'm just gonna come on to, and like I say, that was very much the New Zealand perspective. It isn't so much for the structures, it's the so what. So, like I say, from looking back at the, at the Welsh model now, I've Google searched it, there's lots of things around the projects and activities, but there's nothing there about the impact. Now again, it might be that we wouldn't see that, and it's within the institutions to see, but again, I would challenge, is that actually really the most efficient and effective way forward? So 10 years on, like I say, we've had the conversations around governance and decision making. I think. The issues at the time there are still pertinent now. So investments in the student rep infrastructure within institutions, as we all know, it's key. You need to have singular or team or at least ownership of ensuring that the right students are recruited in a timely way, they're trained and given the support to succeed. So that needs to be institutionally owned. But the national coordination and the valuable work that NSTEP does helps us not start mm -hmm. from scratch helps us reinvent the wheel and share that good practice. So again, that continues to be vital there in Wales, and again, I think it's relevant for us here. The impediments. I think it's still, some of the impediments are still present that need to be minimized. Don't have training and the recruitment of student reps finishing or starting <coughs> around the end of the first term. How do you get that earlier so you've got the student voice being captured and informing decisions within that first vital period of time. Committees, if you're asking students to be on your academic council, don't have it at nine o'clock at night. Like have it at a time of day that actually the students can say, look, we could do that. That works for us. In New Zealand, we had students, two students on our academic council. They were mature students, they had young families, they were nursing, so they were on placements all the time. They had no time. So for them to represent the student voice on our academic council, they either had to miss home life or they had to miss their placements or studying, like, and then we'd bring them in the room and they'd literally be meeting the room. They would just sit there because they weren't empowered to have their voice. And then you'd have criticism from the academic staff saying, well, they rarely, they rarely turn up or if they do turn up, they've got nothing to say. So because you put that structure in place to disempower. So again, focus on the impediments in that space. And then finally, I think it is focusing on the impact. That really helps us show demonstrably this isn't tokenism. This you know, student voice and student representation has been going for at least 20 or 30 years as a strong positioning for the sector across the globe. Let's make sure that we can show that impact is valuable and that time is valuable. I did say meet in the room, sorry, for those of those that are again, Gen X, um, BBC show from back in the day had specifically, I couldn't put the clip up because it's very sweary, um, <laughs> but dragging people into a room just to be meet, as in M-E-A-T, in a room, just sitting there in the chair just to say that they were there, why would you do that? But often with student reps, that's what we do. They meet in the room, that's not fair to them, it's disrespectful, it's discourteous, and it's really undervaluing their time and their effort. So I think consciously, if you are thinking this is meeting the room, change that up. 
Um, and then certainly 10 years on, I would say in terms of the student voice, and this is where the New Zealand positioning in particular was kicking in, is making sure that, that student representation, we already know through the QQI processes that student reps are on our panels for internal reviews, they're on the panels for internal validations, external validations, they're on panels for institutional level reviews. That's all fantastic. But again, so what? Where do we take that? What's the, le the logical next step? Um, program design, particularly in New Zealand, was something that they were making sure that the student voice was not just yes, we've spoken to three students and they said this new program could be good. <laughs> it's generally where is the need for students. Speak to your graduates, speak to the students that you have and demonstrably bring them on that journey so you're customising and tailoring experience in terms of teaching, learning, design and the content of the program that really meets student needs. As was said earlier, if you've got X, Y and Z in a room, how you teach, how you're assessing, what that space looks like, you need to design that from the outset, not halfway through the course, from the beginning. And students can help you do that. So in terms of reflections, I think as a sector, Wales has moved forward significantly. There's all those lovely, again, word clouds. Words on a page, quality is at the heart of what everybody does. We know that the students are really key factors in the institutions. But how much is words on a page? And how much is really driving decision making? And I think for me, next steps in terms of my role now, I've been three months in NCI, I'm looking to take over the world, um, <laughs> and make sure that the, the good student-led, bottom-up decision-making, student-centred decision-making that the institutions were making in New Zealand is actually something that I can put in play here in Ireland. Um, and I'd encourage you to do the same, or at least consider some of the examples that are out there New Zealand didn't come up with all of this themselves, they stole a lot from America, believe it or not. Um, but it genuinely is seeing how you can co-design. So the partnership approach we've been talking about is fantastic and that absolutely is the key. But partnership, I think, needs to include, and it does, thankfully, in one of our steps, um, our strategic plans, it is about co-designing what we do, where we teach, what that looks like, how we're assessing, really and strongly my steer for you I think is moving the entire dynamic away from representation is ticking that box everyone's comfortable in that space to actually having students driving decision making informing that decision making the decisions are still made in the governance structure but it's making sure that that governance structure is truly informed by that student voice and my challenge to you my final note it's like 15 is generally, let's be wiser. Let's continue on this journey. And again, I will be challenging my colleagues in Wales. How can you demonstrate that what you're doing is sensible? How can you demonstrate that you're continuing to evolve this space? This space has been living and breathing for 20, 30 years in some instances. Let's move it forward. Let's not stop. This is continuous quality improvement. <coughs> it isn't just about ticking the box or having QQI say lovely things about what we're doing. It's generally using those levers to demonstrably impact on students and their value and their experiences. So it's not just focus on the past, but I do think for me, the one take I would suggest is really focusing on that transparency of what students have done to inform decision making, demonstrably in your programs. I know we capture it in our program evaluation documents, we talk about it in program committees and academic council and all of the above, but so what? How do we share that with students? Do we put it on our website? Like, how do we demonstrably as a sector show this is what our students led? And I think if we can tackle that, this, together, way ahead of the game in Wales and way ahead again of, of, of New Zealand and lots of other institutions. New Zealand is doing awesome things, but it doesn't have this. It doesn't have the strategic drive and the body and the commitment of NSEP and the people in this room. We can do fantastic things, we can be really smart and wise, and we are, just be wiser. Thank you.